already an indicator that there's something wrong going further upstream. All this algae mat, that's directly nutrified uh, nutrification from the agricultural runoff. That tells you that it's not. That clean, tells right? you that it's enriched with fertilizer. Catching and counting is one of the monthly citizen science checks to monitor not so inviting with dead fish in the water. We don't yet know why. We don't know the cause. What we can say is that these dead fish are a bit like the canary down the coal mine. They tell us that there is something wrong with this water. Not even a fifth of rivers in England meet the target for good ecological standards. The reasons include chemicals from industry, road runoff and leaky septic tanks. The biggest factors, there's the sewage pumped into rivers by water companies and agriculture. Besides sewage, sludge and fertiliser used on farms. New farming rules in 2018 were meant to cut water pollution from agriculture in England, but since then, legal enforcement powers have barely ever been used. ...beneath 825 sewage discharges into English rivers every day. These swimmers in Henley-on-Thames say water companies are treating rivers like sewers. Labour say the problem is even worse. From their own research, every two and a half minutes, sewage dumping occurs, including near the House of Commons. Mr Speaker, do you know that raw human sewage is even being discharged moments away from this very House of Parliament? Now think about that. When members go to vote, there is no place exempt from the Tory sewage scandal. A chemical cocktail of sewage, agricultural waste and plastic, according to a cross-party group of MPs, and it's putting both public health and nature at risk. A new report released today finds that not a single river in England is free from pollution. The Environmental Audit Committee wants to see tougher monitoring and enforcement. George take all of our pile solids, um, a contractor that we hired would take it to farmers fields and inject it. I definitely feel bad about it and uh, you know I feel sorry you know because the farmers they didn't know either so a lorry come came with um, boards uh, I asked what they were doing then some lorries turned up with absolutely disgustingly smelling stuff and um, yeah the they dumped it there, great big black pile, heap. Lived in the country for 
countryside for years and we used to cows, we used to pigs, we used to all different smells, but this was something else. This really was something else. Across the UK, farmland is being fertilised with sewage sludge, which is mostly human faeces. 80% of the nation's sewage sludge gets spread on fields like this one, which happens to be right next to Penny's house. Unless you've actually smelled it for yourself, you will never know how bad it was. It was absolutely horrendous. It made us feel sick. I decided I was going to take my own sample. So I went to Boots, got a tiny little sample bottle, went into the field, took, reached into the stockpile, obviously with gloves on, took my own sample and uh, took it to the lab and um, we had it analysed and the results came back uh, a few days later. It was terrifying, really, really frightening. The analysis of Penny's sludge sample from 2019 found five pathogens, including salmonella. Concerned for her and her husband's health, Penny shared the results with the Environment Agency, the government body that regulates land spreading. The EA said they couldn't comment on a test they didn't carry out. But two years earlier, they'd commissioned their own tests. This is an unpublished report from 2017, which found that samples of sewage sludge destined for farms in England contained salmonella and E. coli bacteria, antibacterial chemicals, pesticides, and persistent organic pollutants, including known carcinogens. Basically, a long list of things that could pose a threat to human health and the environment. The report suggests that the list of potentially hazardous substances now finding their way into the sludge is much longer, and the regulators haven't kept up. The most widespread contaminants named in the report, none of which feature in current land spreading regulations, are triclosan, an antimicrobial chemical that scientists believe may be a cause of antibiotic resistance, glyphosate, a controversial but widely used herbicide, and a host of persistent organic pollutants, chemicals that basically never break down, so slowly accumulate in the bodies of plants and animals. The sludge was also full of chemicals called phthalates, which suggested the presence of plastics and microplastics. The report warned that this type of contamination could ultimately make the soil unsuitable for growing food. Sewage sludge is put through treatments that are intended to kill almost all harmful bacteria like E. coli and salmonella. But test results in the report showed this didn't always work. According to one scientist we spoke to, there's little risk of getting sick from eating food grown in salmonella contaminated sludge. But for people who live near where land spreading happens, people like Penny, the risks may be greater. And when it comes to antibiotic resistance, the health risks from this toxic chemical cocktail take on global significance, as Dr. Andrew Singer explained. That sludge has E. coli in it, plus antibiotics, plus biocides, plus metals. All of that breeds something called an antibiotic resistant bacteria. So as you're maybe rambling through a field that's been amended with this, uh, sludge either last week or a year later, there is an elevated risk that you will, or your pet will, um, acquire this antibiotic resistant bacteria, carry it home with you, the dog licks you in the face, you have it. This is how it's transmitted. It's a rare event, but unfortunately, rare events matter on a global scale. So you, you only need these rare events to happen once, for it to then become important for the world. The Environment Agency's budget had made it much harder to regulate the sector. In response to our story, the EEA said they take their responsibility to protect the environment very seriously, and that the unpublished report was commissioned to inform their new sludge strategy due out later this year. Close to three years since the report was first prepared. You can smell it, can't you? <laughs> Penny, meanwhile, is determined to keep the sewage sludge away from her home. In 2018, she managed to turn the trucks away. And after investigating her complaint last year, the EA agreed that the smell was unacceptable and rules had been broken. So this year, she hopes they'll be able to sit outside again. I turned detective back in August last year, in 2019, because I just feel that 
I still feel now that um, something bad's going on and I'm spending most of my time now on, I didn't even know how to work a computer, still really don't know, but I've Googled and found out so much information. Um, yeah, it's, it's taken over my life. says the government must pay a Georgia farmer whose land was too polluted to grow crops, a ruling that calls into question the effect fertilizing with human and industrial waste from the nation's sewage treatment plants is having on farmland and the food chain. For years, tons of sludge from a plant in nearby Augusta were applied to this sprawling dairy farm until cows, then crops, began to die. Every field where sludge had been land applied, the cotton was a disaster. The Augusta sludge was polluted with heavy metals from industrial waste. Sludge is what's left over after sewage is cleaned and released back into waterways. It's mostly human waste, but the mixture also contains commercial, industrial and medical waste, as well as disease-causing pathogens. Plants across the country churn out more than 7 million tons of sludge each year. About half is incinerated or dumped in landfills. The rest is spread on the land as something the Environmental Protection Agency considers a nutrient-rich and cost-effective fertilizer, sometimes called biosolids, which is highly regulated and safe when federal and state rules are followed. Agency officials say they've found no link between sludge and illness, but ignored other, more skeptical studies. Andy McElmurray, now struggling to make a living, says the program should be shut down. They are allowing the spreading of contaminants on American farmlands that they otherwise would say was be creating a Superfund site under the Superfund law. The government